Hello everyone, um, so this is the next video, the fourth video in this sort of short series of you know, short introduction talks about liberation theology and I am going to talk about Gustavo Gutierrez um, and his theology of liberation, this book and some of the ideas in it in today's session or in this video session. Gutierrez writes that um, if you're going to have a theology of salvation, so a kind of a message of how people are going to be saved, there are two, two dimensions to that within Christian tradition. Um, a, a quantitative one and a qualitative one. So something that's about quantity and something that's about quality. The quantity is kind of well okay this movement starts in Palestine it starts in in Israel it starts with a handful of Jews um, but it goes it goes from a kind of a Jewish group to then uh, convert the pagans bring bring change to the whole world okay the pagan world is the whole world um, that's the quantity change from from the 12 from the first followers, from the earliest communities to the big vision of the world. But there's also this kind of qualitative thing as well. And this is about the um, individual responding to God. So this is about you personally turning away from yourself and from sin. So responding to God means turn away from self turn away from sin it's the call of John the Baptist um, and so um, we can continue with these two ideas in to this notion of there being a human destiny in history Okay, so there is a, a sort of a purpose, a sort of historical purpose. So by history, what we're talking about is the fact that, you know, if I, if I turn away from sin and there is a change, something is changing in my life, in my life history, I'm becoming a different person. If, um, if we are growing from a handful of people to a bigger group of people, then there are a whole sequence of changes. There is this growth in human history. Um, and so that means um, there's something that Gutierrez calls the salvific salvific just is salvation salvific horizon it's like you're looking forward you're forward looking for the change in you and you're forward looking for the greater change uh, among people um, and so this idea of these two greater changes to understand um, these two things he Gutierrez uses Exodus and Exodus has these two stories. It's the story of Moses and it's the story of the people of Israel. And it's Moses and Moses recognizing and hearing God's call for him and his mission. And it's also the, the story of the people coming out of slavery um, to the promised land. Um, so so um, Exodus, Exodus is a key text um, um, that Gutierrez draws upon when trying to, uh, trying to explore this idea. Um, and Exodus has um, both creation and, and, and salvation, um, which are brought together in the liberation from slavery, because out of slavery comes a new created people. Um, and, it's, and both of that is in the act of salvation. So salvation means um, uh, a change and something new. Uh, salvation, um, salvation builds on, um, on those two ideas, creation creation and salvation um, liberation and creation yeah so the story it's a story of the freeing the freeing of the people to become um, the new people of God and salvation liberation creation are all kind of bound up in this
So, so creation is not just a beginning. It's not just about the beginning. It's not just like the Genesis story at the beginning. Creation is actually also a future objective too. The creation of the new. Okay, so we've got creation. Creation can be thought of as a beginning, as a start point. But that's not. But Gutierrez doesn't see it like that. Creation is what you're aiming for. Um, um, and of course, in the story of Exodus, we've also got this other key idea, which is covenant. This is the. This is. Um, this is also part of this, which is um, all about land. It's all about rejecting the um, despoilation of land. It's all about the rejecting of injustice. And the rejecting of hatred so um, in this new kingdom so the new kingdom requires the rejection of all of those other things and that's part of covenant okay um, and what this means and exodus again is the illustrator that you need god and you need man or human hu humankind um, you need both god and man to build your um, new society that's the sum that's going on. It's a it's a combined approach. So that means that the notion of good news for Gutierrez, good news is this movement to um, from an old society or an old way to a new society. It's, um, there's this idea of promise as a gift um, that you accept in faith, you take in on trust, like Moses, trusting in, in, in what God asks him to do. Um, fulfilled in Christ as the sacrifice for all and illuminating or pointing to a future. So this is a maybe coming of the kingdom. This is maybe what coming of the kingdom is about. But the kingdom that comes, the new society, um, the coming um, of the kingdom, is not some sort of vague spiritual thing. This is concrete. We see this in government, in the change in government, in the change in society around us. It is a, a revolution. Um, we see it in, in history, just as just as the people moved from being ruled by Pharaoh to um, the, the the people of Israel, the their own people, this is something that that we can we can see in in historical change. Um, so you could call this a kind of eschatological dimension. It's about a salvation. It's about a future salvation that is achieved in history, in time, and in place. Um, and uh, and it comes about because of the cooperation between. God and and humanity, um, um, and this this is this is because God is a God um, who acts in history. God does not. God is not. Um, God is not a God who who sets apart from history. It's a God who is um, who participates. Um, who interrupts. Who, who who initiates change and Gutierrez is concerned about what he sees as a mistake um, which is um, which is to sort of understand um, the error is to understand um, God's fulfillment as a um, future or after death kind of um, heavenly reward and and for Gutierrez that's wrong and um, that's a mistake the fulfillment is not for the future the fulfillment um, is for this world um, for now um, uh, seen in history that's that's what God's fulfillment is for Gutierrez um, 
it's a it's a it's a it's Exodus now. Not um, Exodus in a spiritual realm. I think this is really interesting because it it's it really raises a question about the kind of religion that you want. You know, do you, is your religion going to be a religion of a sort of spiritual state that you you practice in your life a bit in your moments of meditation and reflection or perhaps exaltation and praise but then it's fully realized um, after this world is that your religion or is your religion a religion of change now is it a religion of encounter in this world um, um, you've got these two different paths this these two different ways of thinking about transformation and change So that means then that um, human acts, human actions um, in this world, what we do, what we do now, builds the kingdom. In this world. So religion is not just the tradition, uh, if you like, maintaining the status quo. Uh, the status quo has to change. It cannot. It cannot. It cannot simply be about perpetuating the status quo. That goes back to um, the rejection of the idea of, of sort of God as the earthly king, as the earthly powers who who then keep the people in their place. That that can't work because there must be a change to the status quo. Um, so if you live in the, so Christians or people um, in poor countries their, their journey of faith and of salvation must begin with a rejection of the structures of injustice i.e. they begin with revolution and that's disruptive the religion is no longer on the in the in in uh, allied with those in power and those who maintain the structures and orderliness of society religion in in this liberation theology vision is a disruptive element it is going to lead to a turning over of tables um, 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 it's going to lead to something different, something new. Um, it is about class struggle. Gutierrez draws on Marx's ideas of a struggle between um, those who have not and those who have. Um, this is a this is a um, um, whenever you have, whenever you have a kind of oppressive um, or um, exploitative um, uh, structures uh, in society, you know these must be smashed. And of course, that raises a question. By what means? By what means? Moses broke. It was like a breakout of uh, Pharaoh that in, in that story of um, of Exodus. It's a breakout. Pharaoh didn't like agree at the end anyway. He he wanted to stop it. There's violence in that story. There is the the the, the people flee, but there is um there is great suffering in the story, and there is a kind of destruction that takes place in Exodus. Um, it's a um, it's not a it's not a calm it's not a calm spiritual idea 
of change. No, it is a it is a kind of violent change. It is a sort of urgent change. St structures must be undone. Uh, they must be they must be taken apart. Um, so what this means is then for if the kingdom if the kingdom is going to come. If if salvation is going to be complete. Then the liberation of people throughout history must happen. This is um, this is a historical liberation from injustice as well as a personal liberation from sin. Um, both of these things. Uh, this is the this is the total salvation. Um, so I guess we might say that you know. Um, the liberation um, theological vision of um, total salvation is um, a historical liberation from oppression and a personal liberation from sin and you need the two the historical and the personal and liberation theology I guess is a criticism that a lot of European theology kind of um, focused a lot on this stuff on the personal but then that kind of meant we could get away from the structures uh, of, of social um, uh, wickedness that were that were keeping um, and that real salvation real salvation um, was a combination of the two events, of the two kinds. You have to have them both. 